your daily Philadelphia Eagles podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Bucks Nation and Eagles fans? Louie, I always forget to ask this before we record on the crossovers. What do Eagles fans call themselves? Um, I mean, there's Eagles Nation, Bird Gang. I mean, I think everyone just identifies as just saying go birds. I mean, that's the that's go the birds. mantra. I so you. I don't yeah, I don't think there's really like uh, you know, it's for an AFC reference, a Bills Mafia type of thing with the right, Eagles. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, the Bucks don't really have it either. So Bucks Nation is just yeah. kind of what we've gone with. So right. Bucks Nation, Eagles fans, whether whatever you call yourselves, welcome to this episode of your favorite Locked On Podcast Network here. Crossover Thursday. I'm David Harrison, co-host of the Locked On Bucks Podcast. He is Louis DiBiase, one of the hosts of the Locked On Eagles Podcast. You can find me on Twitter at dharrison82. Find Louis at DiBiase L O E. And the shows are at Locked On Bucks and Locked On Birds. Thank you for making us your first listen or your first view. Every single day, if you're joining us over on YouTube, we are free and available on all platforms, like I said, including YouTube and pretty much every audio platform you can find. Of course, we're talking about Philadelphia Eagles at Tampa Bay Buccaneers. The Buccaneers hosting a playoff matchup for the first time since 2007, which is amazing when you consider this team has won two Super Bowls in the 2000s. Yet, that's the situation we're in. And Louie, let's kick off with the biggest storylines between these two teams. And let's start with the visiting Philadelphia Eagles, the seventh seed visiting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah, I think you definitely look at Philadelphia. It was, you know, it's a cliche, the tale of two halves, but it really was for the Birds in the 2021 season. Starting off the year two and five, throwing the football at a high volume, but it was low efficiency. They really, it was all about the long term early on in the season. They were trying to find out if Jalen Hurts would sink or swim as a high volume passer in the NFL. And he was sinking. They wanted to know if he was going to be the franchise quarterback, because if not, they would want to use those three first-round picks on potentially trading for one this offseason or drafting one. But then Nick Sirianni, at the halfway point, decided to go short-term. What is the strength of this team right now? It's the offensive line. It's the run game. It's Jalen Hurts' legs. Yeah. And since then, they have won 70% of their games, going 7-3 and three down the stretch. And, you know, the last loss, that third one, was in a meaningless Week 18 um, game against the Dallas Cowboys. So, yeah, I mean, just hats off to Nick Sirianni, the head coach, identifying the strength of this team and literally completely changing the philosophy of his offense at the halfway point, and it was for the better. Not a lot of coaches, not a lot of teams would do that in season, but they did it, and man, are they thriving right now. And uh, this is definitely the most David versus Goliath matchup in the playoffs, but yeah. uh, Philadelphia has been the underdogs before, and I think they, you know, I'm not saying they're the, they should be the favorite by any means on Sunday, but I think they, uh, they definitely should be taken seriously, despite being maybe the... Weakest team in the playoffs? Uh, that mm -hmm. doesn't mean much to me. Yeah, so my co I'm, I'm glad you actually brought that up. So my co-host, James Jarko, on a previous episode this week, actually called the Philadelphia Eagles the weakest team or the worst team. I can't remember which word he mm -hmm. used, but it basically is the same ring in the yeah. NFL playoffs. Honestly, I think it's the Pittsburgh Steelers. I think if the Steelers and Eagles were to play an elimination match, you know, for the first time in NFL history, AFC, NFC, yeah. wild card round game, I think the Eagles would beat the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I think it's the Steelers. Either way, the team's coming from PA, which probably doesn't make PA NFL fans very happy. One right. Eagles fan actually got very offended by that and, and tweeted at us at Locked on Bucks. I love it when fans yeah. do that. He was he was respectful about it, so I love it when they do that. Yeah, I don't think it's like a significant gap. Like I think Philadelphia and San Francisco played very close early on this year. You look right. at like the Tennessee Titans, although although they're the one seed, I don't think the Titans are anything scary in the playoffs. And like you said, Pittsburgh as well. So it's definitely a close gap more than ever in the NFL this year. But I would definitely say Philadelphia is still the ugly duckling of the playoffs. I'm considering where they were, expectations in the preseason. But at the same time, like they earned the right to get in here. When you win seven of your final 10 games, Games, you have every right to be in there. But as I said, it is definitely the most David versus Goliath. It's the ugly duckling of the playoffs against the reigning Super Bowl champions. And uh, I can't wait to see if the Eagles can make it close on Sunday. Absolutely. And look, you, you said it perfectly. I'm glad you said that too. They earned their playoff spot. Nobody mm -hmm. this year stumbling into the play, falling backwards into the playoffs. Every single team that is in the postseason is in the right. postseason for a reason. So they always have a fighting chance. I always say, all you got to do is make it to the tournament. Once you're in the tournament, anything can happen. And for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, it seems like that anything that's going to happen is going to be more and more names on the injury report. And I think that's got to be, just because of the sheer number of players, that's got to be right. one of the top storylines. And then I'm looking for the survivor survivability 
of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers passing attack without Chris Godwin and without Antonio Brown. So first and foremost, uh, who, who's going to play on the field against Jalen Hurts in that rushing defense or rushing attack? That's what I'm concerned about. Outside linebackers, Anthony Nelson, Shaquille Barrett, and Jason Pierre-Paul. So three of your top four outside linebackers are currently dealing with injuries. Anthony Nelson doesn't look good to play. Shaq and JPP actually look like they're on track to play, but that's still going to be a concern coming back from those injuries. And then cornerbacks, Jamel Dean, Sean Murphy, Bunting, Rashad Robinson, when the Eagles do decide to pass the ball, Jamel Dean's the fastest guy on the field in the secondary. So you got a guy like Devontae Smith. That's going to be concerning if he can't go. And then you look at that Buccaneers passing attack without Chris Godwin, without Antonio mm -hmm. Brown. Uh, and then you add on wide receiver Mike Evans, wide receiver Cyril Grayson, both on the injury report with hamstring injuries. Grayson, I don't think is playing. Mike Evans, I think, you know, it's, it's going to take missing a limb uh, to keep him off the field this weekend. Rashad Perryman, though, and Justin Watson also dealing with injuries. So, I mean, it just, it just kind of goes on and on. But here's the thing. Tom Brady threw for 176 yards in the first half against the New York Jets before losing Antonio Brown. Mm -hmm. After he lost Antonio Brown, and I count the whole third quarter because A.B. didn't play any snaps in the third right. quarter before leaving the field the way that he did, Tom Brady threw for 234 yards in that second half. So that is our first look at the post-A.B. offense kind of the way uh, that I'm going to do it. And then against the Carolina Panthers, he threw for 326 yards without Antonio Brown and Chris Godwin uh, and just and had just eight incompletions. But the Philadelphia Eagles coaching staff that you just so accurately praised, and that's kind of my big concern here, they have what the Jets and Panthers didn't have, Louie, six quarters of film to watch on how this Buccaneers offense operates yeah. without Godwin and A.B., and I think that is significant. Now, how much that's going to help this Eagles 11th-ranked pass defense, I don't know if I can quantify that quite, quite honestly, but I think it's going to help no matter what. And I think the question is when you're talking about a top-12 unit, and a top 10 run defense that Philadelphia is also bringing in. We talk about the run offense, a top mm. 10 run defense. The Buccaneers don't like running the ball as it is. I think all of these injuries and all these concerns have, they kind of have to limit just how confident I'm going to be. So you talk about the coaching yeah. staff and their ability to adjust. You look at all those numbers. You look at, you know, who has a clean bill of health, who doesn't have a clean bill of health. I think it's building up to be a very good a competition and you tweeted a stat about the Philadelphia Eagles in their last what 10 of 11 postseason appearances that I was hoping you share with the audience here. Yeah, so I mean that's the crazy part about the Eagles and you mentioned earlier how all you got to do is get in and Eagles fans know that more than anybody. You look at 2008 when they were the 6 seed, they made the NFC title. Although they were the 1 seed in 2017, they were seen as heavy underdogs in all three playoff games when they won the Super Bowl. 2018 as well, they were the 6 seed, nearly made it back to the NFC title. The Eagles, the stat you're talking about, so in 12 playoff games in the 2000s, the Eagles have been underdogs in 12 playoff games and they've covered in 11 of those games. Yeah. So, look, I still think they're the underdog in this game, as they should be, and Tampa Bay was definitely not the team I wanted to see. I wanted the inconsistency of the Los Angeles Rams right now, the Arizona Cardinals. But at the same time, if there was a, a time to catch Tampa Bay and the reigning champions and the greatest quarterback of all time, I guess it would be this weekend. So for the Eagles, injury-wise, I mean, they're – that's not really going to be too much of a problem. If anything, it's the opposite. Good news today on the Miles Sanders front, the Eagle star running back. Um, yeah. he It looks like things are trending upwards, that he should be ready to go for Sunday. Same with Jordan Howard. Jalen Hurts' ankle is getting close to 100%. He was a full participant today. To me, the issue isn't injuries. It's what you talked about. You know, They have six quarters of film now of Tom Brady without Antonio Brown and Chris Godwin. Can you at the same time, you know, for me – Although they don't have those weapons, I'm still nervous about what the philosophy of this defense is going to be. Because last time these two teams played earlier in the year, the Eagles were terrified to let anything, you know, they they let everything 20 yards or less in front of them happen. They were right. too scared to get beat over top. And I'm nervous that even without those receivers in Tampa Bay, Jonathan Gannon, the Eagles defensive coordinator, will still, you know, keep that you know, softer mindset intact because anytime the Eagles defense is faced, you know, you mentioned they're 11th right now against the pass, but mm -hmm. most of that has come against Jake Fromm and Garrett Gilbert and Mike Glennon. When they've played star quarterbacks this year, they were allowing at least 70% of their completions to go every yeah. single time against Brady, Mahomes, Derek Carr, you name it. So I just wonder now that they've played more aggressive on defense, Okay, now you throw a star quarterback, though, back in the fold. Are you going to keep that mentality, that philosophy? It'll be really interesting to see. Um, I'm definitely interested the most in the Buccaneers offense against the um, Eagles defense matchup on Sunday.
Yeah, absolutely. And great context of those numbers. And of course, that all plays into how the teams actually face each other when they're facing these teams. Specifically, they're both going to be looking for an edge, Louie, and Bucks and Eagles fans are also going to be looking for an edge this weekend all through the playoffs. We're all looking for an edge, especially when we're putting money on games. Louie and I want to thank OnlineGambling.com for sponsoring today's crossover episode of the Locked On Bucks and Locked On Eagles podcast. If you don't already know, OnlineGambling.com is a website dedicated to giving betters the edge Throughout the playoffs, they're providing you with the best NFL tips, news, and more to help your bets be as informed as ever. The experts at OnlineGambling.com have sent Louie and I a challenge. The challenge is putting our own knowledge to the test, coming up with our early Super Bowl predictions to see just how much of an expert we really are. I'm going with Bucks versus Bills because you don't bet against Tom Brady. And I picked Buffalo in the preseason with everybody looking vulnerable, Louie, like you were talking about earlier. At this Mm -hmm. point, I just don't see enough compelling evidence from one team or another to knock me off that prediction. So Bucks versus Bills is my prediction. Louie, you're going with Buffalo out of the AFC as well, but you've got Aaron Rodgers getting over the hump representing the NFC with the Green Bay Packers. So boo to you, Bucks fans. Everybody send him your meanest gift you can on Twitter. <laughs> of course, we're going to be keeping a close eye on those predictions as the playoffs continue to play themselves out. If you're planning on placing a bet during the playoffs, it's a lot of peas. Make sure you head to OnlineGambling.com before you do. OnlineGambling.com gives betters the edge by providing the best and most trusted experience online all day, every day. That includes their OG tips section where you'll find their own Super Bowl picks as well as the inside track on how to beat the odds through the NFL playoffs. So make sure you visit OnlineGambling.com slash NFL for all the latest gambling news, tips, and info to beat the odds and give you the edge throughout the playoffs. Remember OnlineGambling.com slash NFL to make the most of this year's playoffs. Thank you again, Bucks fans and Eagles fans, for making your favorite Locked On podcast podcast your first listen or your first view every single day. Louis DiBiase, David Harrison of Locked On Eagles and Locked On Bucks talking about this weekend's super wild card matchup between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Philadelphia Eagles. And Louis, we talked about uh, the biggest storyline: some health, some stats, some some things going on, some coaching staff decisions. Now let's get into the matchups, which you kind of already touched on a little bit. But can you elaborate just a little bit more on which key matchup on defense? And yeah. which key matchup on offense you think the Eagles really have to hone in on in order to get the upset win in Raymond James Stadium? Yeah, so as I mentioned earlier, I'm most concerned with what the Eagles defensive coordinator, Jonathan Gannon, what his philosophy is going to be heading into this game. And that will severely dictate this matchup that I'm going to talk about. And it's Darius Slay against Mike Evans. And it's the obvious one. It's the wide receiver one against the CB one. But to me... That is what's going to dictate this game if Gannon allows it. Because without Antonio Brown, without Chris Godwin, you know, you looked at uh, when you look at earlier this year in that first matchup, Gannon did not have Slay shadowing Evans or any receiver because you have Brown and Godwin. You keep them on one side of the field. But now that those two are out of the equation, will Gannon let this team play more aggressive? Will he say, Darius Slay, you are on Mike Evans all game? take him out, make things a lot easier for the rest of this defense. Because I got news for you. If Gannon does what he did last time and has each guy on one side, Tampa Bay, I don't know why they wouldn't just have Mike Evans on Steven Nelson's side the entire game. Or as good as Avante Maddox has been in the slot this year, the number one graded slot cornerback, according to Pro Football Focus, Mm -hmm. he is one of the smaller corners in football. Mike Evans, one of the best taller receivers in the NFL. So if Darius Slay is not on Mike Evans, I'm very concerned about the other corners and their ability to limit him, even with Evans maybe not being 100%. And so to me, that is the key matchup on that side of the ball. And it's a key matchup if Jonathan Gannon allows it to be. And Darius Slay is having, to me, maybe the best year of his career. It's the best Mm -hmm. season an Eagles corner has had since, I don't know, Asante Samuel in like 2009, 2010. They've been dying for this kind of cornerback play. Now, Gannon, let that corner go and do that. Let him go win you a football game. Don't hold him back in this defense. Um, I'm fascinated to see if if he's going to allow it. And that's the matchup I'm really excited for on the defensive side of the football. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, big play slay, right? That's his nickname for a reason. Let him go make big plays for your defense. Live and die by your strengths. I agree completely with that, and I would be surprised Mm -hmm. the Eagles defense uh, doesn't do that exact exact thing that you're talking about for the Buccaneers defense. I'm looking at the linebackers versus that Eagles rushing attack, and honestly, it's yep. all of them. It's all four of them. I don't care who's out there starting, whether it's Devin White, Levante David is, is doubtful, uh, but whoever's out there on the field against that Eagles rushing attack, 
uh, the best rushing team in the National Football League, even without Miles Sanders, you know, dealing with that injury and everything, still doing damage. And like you said, maybe getting him back. Recently ran for over 230 yards against the Washington football team, which, of course, is another team that I'm very familiar with covering them for the Locked on Washington football team podcast. Uh, that WFT rushing defense statistically ranks higher than Tampa Bay's in yards per carry average. The Buccaneers are 15th in yards per carry, allowing 4.3 yards per carry. The problem is, or I guess not a problem if you're a Buccaneers fan, but the thing is, teams don't really run against them because they're usually playing from behind, and that kind of right. forces them to have to throw the ball. So that's that's significant. But also, the Buccaneers' rush defense has actually been worse than that 4.3 yards per carry. I actually read a Philadelphia article from a local news outlet there talking about that ranking and the fact that the Eagles' rush offense has actually been better than their overall average ranking has been as well these last few weeks. So those two things, I think, are also going to play off of each other. And, Louie, yeah. on my offensive side of things, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Mike Evans and Rob Gronkowski against Eagles pass defense uh, because if the Buccaneers can score early, then it forces the Philadelphia Eagles to get out of their run-heavy attack earlier than maybe they want yep. to or, or at all uh, if they really want to. And it only benefits that defense who knows how to put pressure on quarterbacks. That's Todd Bowles' specialty while taking advantage of mistakes from young quarterbacks who aren't used to facing so many exotic looks. Yeah, I think this Eagles t team, they they want to play with a lead. They want to be able to run the football and keep this close. But another matchup I'm looking at is another strength against strength. It's Dallas Goddard against those tight ends you mentioned. You know, Devin White, Levante David, if he's ready to go. Um, because to me, although they need to stick with who they are and that's running the football, they have broken the franchise record this year for most rushing yards in a single season. Like you mentioned, they were the number one rushing attack in the NFL this year, which is pretty impressive, by the way, considering the first half of the year, they were never running the football. Um, but at the same time, I'm still nervous about this defensive matchup against Tom Brady. And like you said, the Buccaneers have gained leads early. If Jalen Hurts has to start throwing to get the Eagles back into the football game, what are his options? He really has Devontae Smith and Dallas Goddard. And that's really it. I like the growth of Quez Watkins this year, but he is not a third passing option in an offense. So you're going to really need Goddard and Smith to make up the bulk of your passing attack. And Goddard has a tougher matchup than Smith for sure. And so he has been incredible since Zach Ertz was traded at the deadline, since he got that contract extension. They made the right call. Um, top three this year in tight ends when it comes to yards per reception. He's a deep threat. He's a great blocker. Uh, run after the catch ability. He's got a tough matchup on Sunday, but you need your stars to elevate you on the biggest stage. And Dallas Goddard is one of those guys. So I'm really excited about that matchup as well. Absolutely. One of my favorite tight ends in the National Football League coming up, Dallas Goddard. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe you can start calling him Baby Gronk if he really keeps this thing going. But yeah, a total package of tight end, really, if you look at it. 100%. So coming up next on Locked on Eagles and Locked on Buccaneers, it's crossover Thursday. We're going to get into the keys to victory for both of these teams and we'll look at the lines, some sports betting coming up next right here on Crossover Thursday. And guys, today's show is sponsored by GetUpside. It's an incredible app that everybody who buys gas needs to know about. My listeners are making up to 25 cents for every gallon of gas every time they fill up. Just download the free GetUpside app in the App Store or Google Play right now and use the promo code TOUCHDOWN and get a bonus 25 cents per gallon on your first fill up. That's up to 50 cents in cash back. Don't pay full price of the pump anymore. And uh, it's gas prices are pretty high right now. Get cash back using GetUpside. Again, download the app for free and use the promo code TOUCHDOWN to get up to 50 cents per gallon in cash back on your first tank. Some people who drive a lot are making as much as two to $300 a month in cash back and there's no catch. The money gets added right to your account and you can cash out anytime to your bank account, PayPal, or an e-gift card for Amazon and other brands. Guys, today's show is also sponsored by Bet Online. It's that time of year. We've got the NFL playoffs right around the corner this weekend, and Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action for 2022. New year and a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today and receive your 50% off welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code. It's locked on L O C K E D O N to get started. You've got football, basketball, hockey, boxing, UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet online where the game starts.
All right, guys, welcome back into Crossover Thursday. I'm Louis DiBiase of Locked On Eagles. He's David Harrison of Locked On Buccaneers, and we thank you for making Locked On Eagles and Locked On Bucks your first listen each and every day. A big wild card matchup between these two teams on Sunday at 1 p.m. Uh, David, between uh, Jalen Hurts and Tom Brady at quarterback. And did you know this is actually um, the largest age gap in playoff history between two starting quarterbacks? I did not know that, but that's. Uh... That age gap status, I mean, has been used a lot this season for Buccaneers games, but, uh, but that's, and it's that's very interesting. To <laughs> and, I mean, I'm a huge fan of Jalen Hurts, so uh, if there was another quarterback outside of Tom Brady I'd like to watch yeah. this weekend, it would be Jalen. So I'm pretty happy that this matchup is happening. Yeah, I feel like these two players, obviously, quarterback always in the NFL, are going to be, you know, main keys to the victory. But, David, for you, if Tampa Bay gets out with a win, as some are expecting on Sunday, what will be the keys in getting that W? Yeah, I think the, the Buccaneers have to score early. And I mean, and a lot of people are going to kind of roll their eyes and say, oh, score points, what a, what a great key to victory. But I think the emphasis has to be on score early, right? The Buccaneers right. put up 14 points in the first quarter the last time these two teams faced. Now, that was week six. And like we've kind of chronicled, a lot has changed since mm -hmm. week six for both of these teams. Uh, in some ways, maybe not as, as good, but in, in a lot of ways, uh, these teams have gotten a little bit better. The Buccaneers have learned how to play, you know, minus Chris Godwin, minus Antonio Brown, Leonard Fournette has been out for a little while. Ronald Jones has also been banged up. So, I mean, there's a lot of growth happening in, in the midst of all this adversity, but I think that the Buccaneers have to come out and find a way to put those points up. Uh, they've only put up 14 or more points in another game since that Eagles game once, and it was the very next week against the Chicago Bears. Since that Chicago Bears game, they have not put up 14 or more points in a single game quarter this NFL season. So when I say score early, again, people might roll their eyes, but the Buccaneers haven't been doing a lot of scoring early. And right. I think if they don't find a way to do that against Jalen Hurts and this Eagles offense, that's only, or the Eagles defense rather, that's only going to help Jalen Hurts continue to run that ground game and try to bleed the clock, keep yep. Tom Brady off the field, put points up themselves and force the Buccaneers to come out then under the gun a little bit. And you get a three now against a run heavy team. You could lose a quarter with only one or two sure. possessions before you even uh, blink an eye. So even with fewer weapons uh, and some banged up weapons are the ones that they still have on the field, they've got to replicate that week six uh, potential in, in production. 21 points in the first half would be amazing in this playoff round. Really put Jalen Hurts under pressure coming out of the locker room in the third quarter. If they do that, then I think they come away with a win. Yeah, I hate to be in an echo chamber, but I completely agree with you. I think starting fast is so key for both of these teams because it could force the Eagles to play in a certain style that is, one, very beneficial for them or very ben beneficial for Tampa Bay. Because like you said, if the Buccaneers start off hot and they're up by multiple scores and the Eagles can't be that run-first team anymore and they need to you know speed things up and rely on Jalen Hurts' arm, that bodes very well for the Buccaneers. If the Eagles can start fast, which, David, they have not done uh, for a while now. They've been in you know double-digit holes now in the first half of their last three important games against Washington twice and against New York. You know, of course, they were able to get out of that because you're playing Garrett Gilbert. You're playing Jake Fromm and Mike Glennon and Taylor Heineke. But when you're playing Tom Brady and you're down 14 and you're not really a pass-heavy offense that's efficient in higher volume – that's not a recipe for a win against the reigning Super Bowl champions. So for the Eagles, it's to start fast too because you just can't be that kind of passing team. However, again, another key though, you do need to be that passing team. I'm not saying Jalen Hurts needs to throw 40 plus times, throw for 400 yards and do what Nick Foles did against Brady in Super Bowl 52 and match him that way. But the Eagles do have to be multiple. They have to be aggressive. And they, they're going to need Hertz's arm more than they have in the past because I, I don't think this game is going to go the way where they can control the momentum, control the clock, and just run all over them the entire game because Tampa Bay is going to put up points. So you're going to have to keep up as well. And so you're going to want to control the game and play your style. But against Tampa Bay, again, this is not the same type of matchup you've had in the second half of the season. So I would say starting early, being multiple, and being aggressive on both sides of the ball. Like if the Eagles want to pull off an upset, those are three keys for me. Absolutely. But I think, you know, at the end of the day, I think pressure is cumulative, right? And I think for the right. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they've been playing all season as the defending Super Bowl champions, getting everybody's A game. And they're coming to this matchup. I mean, they have everything to lose, whereas the Philadelphia Eagles, kind of because of that ugly duckling, uh, stigma that you that you mentioned yeah. earlier on. They really have nothing to lose. If the Eagles house lose this money game. Is the big name, a big word that's being thrown out there all week. It seems like they have house money. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if the Eagles lose this game, they're going to go home and everyone's like, yeah, you know, but it was the defending Super Bowl champs. It was Tom Brady. Right. Good job, guys. Retool, reload, and we'll, let's, go, let's go get them next year and focus on the Cowboys. If the Buccaneers lose this game, 
I mean, I don't, I don't, I might, I might just have to mute my own Twitter account for a little while, Louis, <laughs> if the Buccaneers lose this game. But look, yeah. the Buccaneers are nine point favorites, so two scores, not a you know full two scores, but a two score margin of victory, which a lot of times in the NFL that's kind of considered a blowout. You mentioned that stat earlier on the Eagles. I don't know if you have an official score prediction just yet. I know I don't have one, but I honestly kind of feel like this is a game where the Eagles could cover that spread. Yeah. I'm looking at seven or eight points for the Buccaneers to win this game, even though I still have yeah. the Bucs winning, which at the end of the day, that's that's the important part. Yeah, I don't have an official score prediction. I obviously do think the Buccaneers are the favorite. I'm sorry, Eagles fans, but I think, you know, as you mentioned, fans are realistic and they know that as well. Um, yeah. Lately, when the Eagles are in the playoffs, they're not just happy to be there because of what the expectations were after 2017. But right. this year, fans did not really expect to be here. And so against the reigning Super Bowl champions, against Tom Brady, yeah, they're not expecting a win either. I think they could definitely do it. This doesn't feel like a team that limped in and has no business being here, as I mentioned earlier. But I would definitely say Tampa Bay's favored. Um, that minus nine, I kind of like the Eagles to cover. You know, you look at that game week six, the game, the final score was 28 to 22. The Eagles made it interesting down the stretch, although that kind of lies about how close the game was for three and a half quarters. It's still the Eagles, a lot of the time, they get that backdoor cover because yep. they're pretty good in garbage time. They put up points that way, they're explosive. And so I would say if you're going to, you know, pick this head to head, go Tampa Bay. But when it comes to that minus nine right now, and we'll see if that moves, but um, I like the Eagles to cover that, Dave. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, Vegas doesn't care how teams cover. All they care is that they That's cover. Right. That's right. That's all that They have been doing that. So great stuff on this crossover, Louie. Uh, good luck this weekend on the game, of yep. course. Good luck. If, and we'll see how the rest of this goes. Uh, talk again in the offseason or maybe further on into the postseason for either show, either fan base. Thank you, fan bases, listeners, viewers, for making your favorite Locked On podcast show your first listen or view every day. Come back tomorrow. Louie and I will have another show with our co-hosts, I believe, right? I, I believe Gino is back with That's you right. tomorrow. Uh, for your final episode to give one last look at this wild card, super wild card round matchup between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Philadelphia Eagles. For your second listen, let us suggest the Locked On Bets podcast, your daily one stop shop for all your gambling needs. Locked On Bets, hosted by your boy Q, Locked On Raiders host, also in the playoffs with expert analysis and insight from Lee Sterling, free and available on all platforms, just like the Locked On Bucks and the Locked On Eagles podcast. Until we speak again, Bucks Nation, Bird Gang, if you're out and about, please be safe. Be kind to one another, especially you Philly fans. Be kind to everybody. And thank you for joining us on this crossover Thursday at the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.